So just to give you a bit of an outline of what I want to talk about, first is, well, let's first talk about what arthritis actually is. Because we use that term a lot and you read a lot about it, but how often is it actually explained what the pathology is? We'll talk about the ankle joint itself and ankle arthritis and how we can manage this debilitating condition. So first, what is arthritis? So in order to understand arthritis, we have to do a quick little anatomy primer. So arthritis affects joints. So what is a joint? Well, a joint is an area in your body where two or more bones meet and allow motion between them. Inside of a joint, the, the bone is lined with cartilage, and cartilage is a smooth lining that allows for fluid and pain-free motion within a joint. And even with all the uh, advances in science, we still haven't been able to create a synthetic material that has the properties of cartilage and as smooth as cartilage is. The um, ligaments are soft tissues that surround the joint and provide stability to the joint while allowing for motion. And synovial fluid is a lubricant fluid that the body creates inside of a joint to allow, once again, for fluid motion within a joint. So what is arthritis? Well, arthritis is a degenerative process that affects that cartilage inside the joints. The arthritic process leads to loss of the cartilage, which exposes underlying nerves and causes pain. There's a lot of different causes of arthritis. So primary arthritis is bad luck. That's wear and tear throughout your life and genes that your mom and dad gave you. The other, op the other uh, causes of arthritis are inflammatory arthritis, which I think we'll hear a little bit more about today. That m the, may or the most common cause of inflammatory arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis, which I'm sure many people have heard about or maybe suffer from. And post-traumatic arthritis I'll be talking a little bit about today in foot and ankle health. The picture here, you can see the arthritic change. On the left, there's a normal knee joint. Articular cartilage, the white stuff there, looks really normal and smooth. On the right, there's holes in the cartilage, there's bone underneath exposed, and there's bone spurs forming in some of the reactions we see with arthritis. So interestingly, cartilage itself doesn't contain pain nerves or pain fibers. What happens with arthritis is as the cartilage thins out and you lose cartilage, it exposes the underlying bone and the nerves in that bone, and that's what causes the pain of arthritis. Arthritis also causes stiffness in the joint because the ligaments change as well as the fluid that your body is creating changes, which results, so you, the end result is what we all know of as the symptoms of arthritis, which is pain and stiffness. So let's move on and talk a little bit more about, specifically about ankle arthritis. So the ankle, quite to simplify it, is made up of three main bones, the tibia, the fibula, and the talus. Now the tibia is the big shin bone, that you, and the fibula is the small outer bone on the outside of your ankle joint, and the talus is the bone in the middle that moves up and down when you walk. The primary function of the ankle joint itself is what's called dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So dorsiflexion is when you're bringing your toes up towards your nose, and plantar flexion is when you're stepping on the gas pedal. Normal walking requires about 10 degrees of dorsiflexion and 25 degrees of plantar flexion to walk without a limp and kind of get around and, uh, normally. So ankle arthritis. Well, ankle arthritis is much less common than something like hip and knee arthritis. I'm sure that many people here have or know someone who has ankle or knee arthritis or hip arthritis and potentially has had a hip or knee replacement due to that. Ankle arthritis is much less common and it would be surprising if anybody in the room had, say, an ankle replacement, but it's possible. Unlike hip and knee arthritis, which is usually primary arthritis, the one you get from your mom and dad, ankle arthritis is usually post-traumatic arthritis. And so the picture here, the x-ray, is an example of a fracture dislocation of the ankle. So the talus is not where it belongs. And that's something that I deal with a, on a kind of routine basis at the South Oak campus, is these ankle fractures. As I said before, many other causes of ankle arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, gout, which we're gonna hear a bit more about today, uh, infection, and then deformity. So deformity that, you've, that people have acquired, such as a flat foot, or things that they're born with, such as you know, club foot in kids. So here's two x-rays. On the left is a normal ankle joint. And if you look at the joint where it's circled, between the talus, I don't know if I can see the mouse. So 
So I'll just talk really loud. So here's the talus, and here's the tibia, and here's the fibula. This space in between the bones here is where the cartilage is. Cartilage you don't see on x-ray because there's no calcium in it. So the invisible part of the black space between the bones is where we see the cartilage on an x-ray. So on the left side, there's a nice smooth line of black space housing the cartilage and a healthy ankle joint. On the right, oops, on the right side, however, that space is gone for the most part. And you can start to see the bones are actually starting to touch. So despite the fact I can't see the cartilage and the loss of cartilage, I know it's damaged and I know there's arthritis because the, the space between the two bones is gone. Now the bones are rubbing on one another and that causes problems with pain, stiffness, and the feeling of grinding and clicking and catching. Research has shown, and Canadian research has shown that the disability caused by ankle arthritis is equivalent to that caused by hip arthritis. But it's uncommon, so few people know about it and few people know about the treatments for it. Even a lot of medical professionals are unaware of advances in treatments for ankle arthritis. So let's talk a little bit about those treatments. So first off, any arthritis, we want to talk about treatment without surgery. You want to treat this before you come see me. Uh, these treatments are used for as long as possible to avoid surgery, because if you can avoid surgery, you want to avoid surgery. That includes weight management, so staying a healthy body mass index, low impact exercise, things like cycling, swimming, aquasize are all great for arthritis. Anti-inflammatory medications, those can be pills or they can be creams and topical treatments. Uh, braces, orthotics, and injections. And injections can either be steroids or lubricants, and there's a few different options. You know, there's people talking about doing other things, stem cells and things, but that's a little bit on the research side of things. Once we're no longer effectively treating pain with non-surgical treatment, we move on and think about, okay, well, what can we do from a surgical standpoint? And there's a few different options depending on the stage of disease and what we're looking at. Those include ankle arthroscopy, which is putting a camera inside the ankle joint to do kind of a cleanup job, an ankle fusion, and an ankle replacement. We'll talk a little bit more about both of those things. Ankle arthroscopy, that's when we put cameras and other tools through small holes in the front of the ankle. This can be used for very early arthritis. So the x-ray here, on the front of the joint where the arrows are pointing, you see these large bone spurs. But the space between the bones is still, still there. There's not bone on bone arthritis here. So in this situation, we can use arthroscopy to kind of do a cleanup job. We can take out those bone spurs. That can help with pain and symptoms and allow people to function better and take less medication. You have to have pretty good cartilage left in the joint for this to work, though. Obviously, in that previous x-ray I showed you where bone is grinded on bone, we're not going to be able to solve that with, by putting a camera in the ankle joint, unfortunately. Not yet. Um, this doesn't change the underlying disease process. So are we going to prevent this person from getting arthritis down the road? Maybe not, but we can make their life better in the meantime. Now, once we're on to the bone-on-bone -bone type of arthritis, we're talking about way more significant surgery. This includes ankle fusion. And ankle fusion is kind of the, historically, the surgical treatment of choice for people with really bad ankle arthritis. What we do here is we actually knit the tibia to the talus. So instead of having an ankle joint, now the tibia and the talus are just one bone. This eliminates the joint, and so it eliminates the motion and it eliminates the pain from arthritis. Un you know, unfortunately, taking away the motion at that joint obviously has an impact. Um, so when we talk about you know, benefits of an ankle fusion, well, it's not all doom and gloom. When we tell people that, you know, when I have this conversation in my clinic about, oh, well, we're going to fuse your ankle, the look I get of terror is very common. Uh, but it's a really excellent operation at providing long-term pain relief from arthritis. So people who come in unable to walk because of severe pain in their ankle, this is still a very good option. You can be more active with an ankle fusion than you would think. And it would be challenging for someone to walk into my clinic and pick out the person who's walking with an ankle fusion. It doesn't change so much as you would think based on what we're actually doing with the surgery. Uh, and then we talk about, well, some people actually aren't uh, candidates for an ankle joint replacement, and then fusion is maybe a better option for them. So what are the problems? Well, obviously we're going to lose some motion. We've taken away the ankle joint, which is the joint with the most amount of motion in your foot. So that can reduce your function in some ways. And also taking away that motion actually leads to increased wear and tear on the other joints in your foot, 
which means more arthritis down the road. So that's not ideal. So in comes ankle replacement. Uh, so ankle replacement is the insertion of a prosthetic ankle joint to replace the arthritic joint. And the, there's an example of one of our modern prostheses on the slide there. These are a combination of metal and plastic or what's called polyethylene surfaces in order to recreate the joint. And so the metal uh, surfaces go on each end of the bone and the, the plastic is in between kind of replicating what the cartilage used to do. These allow for pain relief from arthritis but they preserve motion of the joint. So ankle replacements have actually been around since about 1970, uh, but the early results were kind of terrible, so we ditched that for quite some time. And it's really only been in the past maybe 10 or 15 years that there's been an interest uh, in doing ankle replacements again. And even when I did my residency training in the early 2000s uh, to mid-2000s, we still weren't really doing a lot of ankle replacements in Calgary. And the numbers now have just, in the past five years or so, have just skyrocketed. And we'll talk about why that is. But if we look at the x-ray here, on the left is a picture of a prosthesis that was done maybe in the 90s. And that has since been uh, ditched because it really did not function very well and ended up with poor results. And on the right is a modern uh, replacement that would have been done in the past year or so. These are the projections for total ankle replacements in the USA. And if you look, in 1997, we're talking on the order of hundreds in the US, you know, with a population over 300 million. 24, fast forward to 2014, suddenly we're doing thousands per year, and the projections are actually to go, you know, over 10,000 per year coming up, which, you know, doesn't seem like that many, but the, these numbers are being replicated in most develop, uh, developed nations in the world, including Canada. So why are we doing more ankle replacements? Well, we have better implants. So the materials and the designs of the implants are getting better and they're lasting longer. And we also have better surgical techniques. We understand what we're doing more than we used to and how to make these implants last longer and function better. The second thing is, well, we have better revision options down the road. Because these are mechanical components, they're going to have to be redone at some point. That plastic isn't uh, living tissue. It doesn't regenerate itself. So, you know, eventually it's going to wear out and we're going to have to redo it. In the past, that wasn't really an option because we didn't have the um, actual design of an implant to be able to redo it once it wore out. And then finally, we're able to ta tackle larger deformities. It's very uncommon that someone ends up with ankle arthritis and not some sort of you know, crooked foot or crooked ankle. In the past, if you had any crooked ankle, we couldn't actually do an ankle replacement. Now we can. So what are the benefits? Well, especially when compared to fusion. Well, we retain your motion. So that's improved function. You walk more normally. You can do more. You can be more active. Uh, Retaining that motion also protects those other foot joints. You're not increasing the wear and tear on those other foot joints and leading to arthritis in other parts of the foot like you do with a fusion. And, you know, the big thing, maintain an active lifestyle. The reason that we're treating arthritis is because we want you to be active and we want you to have a pain-free lifestyle. There aren't, it's not all sun with an ankle replacement, though. With any uh, joint replacement surgery, there's risks. First of all, with the um, ankle joint replacement, you have to have a straight or what we call a balanced foot. So that means if you have a really high arched foot or you have a really flat foot, sometimes you're going to need multiple surgeries in a staged fashion in order to have an ankle joint replacement. As I mentioned, mechanical parts wear out. You're going to have to have another operation at some point. And infection. Anybody who has a hip or knee replacement or other joint replacement in the room knows that their surgeons probably talk to them about infection around implants and it's not pretty. So that's something that keeps me up at night. So this is an example of multiple surgeries. So on the top left is a bit of a small picture, but this is a picture of a, a patient with a flat foot. And so they had a flat foot that was so flat that it ended up wearing out their ankle joint. In order to get an ankle joint replacement in though, because of the flat foot, I had to do multiple surgeries in order to correct the shape of the foot first, followed by doing an ankle joint replacement. And I think this person's had an operation every October for about three years now. So it can be cumbersome, but we think there's benefit rather than doing something different. So finally, just a quick, you know, frequently asked questions. So what are the outcomes of ankle replacements? Well, we can now say based on our current prostheses and our research over the past decade that we have reliable pain relief and patient satisfaction in the majority of patients. So research would say that about 85% of people are very happy with their ankle joint replacement and would do it again if they had the option to redo it. How long will it last? This is a bit of a tricky question because our current prostheses that we're using haven't been around long enough to really answer this question. The generation before, the 
older technique or older um, ankle replacement models, about 90% of them were still working well at five years. Doesn't seem like that long. Uh, 80% at 10 years, and that's if you take, this is looking at you know, global information, thousands and thousands of prostheses, so the numbers look a bit lower than they might be if you looked at specialized centers, people doing them all the time. Uh, and like I said, all of us who do this now are under the impression that the current prostheses in the current generation are going to last longer this, than this. We're going to be looking more like hip and knee replacements where we're hoping to get 15 plus years out of these prostheses. What happens when it fails? So what about that 10 and 20% that I'm just talking about that didn't work out? Well, that really all just depends on why it's not working anymore. If it's infection, that's really not good. That means a bunch of operations, antibiotics. It's a big problem. Otherwise, it depends on, you know, if it, the plastic wears out. Well, sometimes it's as simple as we go and we pop out that plastic, put a new one in, and, you know, off you go. There's other options, though, if there's different problems. As I mentioned before, there's the uh, actual instrumentation and the prostheses that we're using are changing all the time and giving us more options for reconstruction down the road. So to conclude, ankle arthritis is a, significant, a source of significant disability for those affected. I'm sure there's at least a few people in the room that know that. The most common cause is post-traumatic, so you broke your ankle 20 years ago, now it hurts all the time. There's many different treatment options depending on the stage of disease, and total ankle replacement is now an excellent option for the right patient. Thank you.